started getting kind of strange, and I noticed it right away. But I thought, well, it's just a cold, you know, it'll go away, like most people would do. But it didn't go away. So I said, okay, I let it go for quite a while. Then I started getting mean. I've never been mean with my sister before. She's gonna be 90 in November this year. And uh, we had violent arguments. And uh, I told her, I said, Shirley, there's something going on. A friend of mine I've been with for like 26 years, a platonic friend, Lynn Houghton. She said, Michael, I think you should go to the doctor because this wheeziness is not good. And it's, it's getting worse. So I went to see Dr. Smith and uh, he put a scope down my nose. You have Lawrence cancer, Michael. It's wrapped around your voice box like two snakes. Now I can cut it out and you'll have a switch for the rest of your lives. I don't want a switch. All right, but Michael, we have to do something fast because you're a stage four. That's it, Michael. He said, if you don't do this now, you're gonna go to sleep and you're never gonna wake up because it'll shut the breathing off. I said, oh no. He said, now listen to me. You're not gonna die. Do you believe that? I said, I wanna believe that. No, 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 no. Do you believe that? I said, I guess so. Well, we'll take that. But tomorrow we start the treatment, Michael. Radiation and chemo. You're gonna go through 40 treatments every single day. I said, I'll be here. That night, we was in my room, me and my sister, and I said, dear God, I've never asked for that in my life, but I'm asking now, from the bottom of my heart, for my sister and my little animal, my cat, don't take me yet, because I have a lot to do here. I kept losing weight, and I was getting through the treatment, but they told me, they said, uh, they kept going, man, they said, it's too soon yet. I said, what do you mean it's too soon? Down here, Michael is gonna get bright red, very red, and it's from the radiation. Now don't be alarmed when it does. Well, then I start seeing it when it's coming in. And they said, I know you don't like this. And I said, listen, if it's gonna save my life, then I'm, I'm doing it. That's why I'm doing it. So I kept going and I kept going and I kept going. And their treatments were getting harder because they said they would. And uh, so finally on my last treatment, I remember I told my sister, I said, we're almost done and I'm still here. You know why I'm here? That's why. I said, Shirley, I used to be, as you know, I was a musician, a great musician, but I said, the other side of me just took over, the dark side, and it pushed the good side out. And I never want that, but I did get it. And now that I'm free of, of cancer, I said, if I can help someone to go through what I went through and show them there is life after cancer. But you've got to keep believing and you've got to trust your doctors and they will help you. Dr. Memoran said, I don't think you'll play again. And I proved him wrong. I said, I've been playing since I was 10 years old. I can't give it up now. So when they gave me back, when God gave me back the one gift, I couldn't sing anymore. But it's, it's the one gift I have is my ball. Even at 72, I said, I'm, I'm still doing it. And I'm really proud of that because I don't know anybody that's 72 to still play basketball. <laughs> no. And I'm really grateful. I am, I am so internally grateful to all the doctors I had.